Across the world, Professor Willie Shoinka is known to be an activist who expressed himself through literary artworks and even received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1986. Now he is 90 years old and President Bola Tinubu has renamed the National Arts Theatre in Igomu, Lagos, after him. According to the President, Shoinka is one Nigerian whose influence transcends the country's space and who inspires people around the world, explaining that since his youth, he has been a vocal critic of oppression and injustice wherever it exists, from apartheid in South Africa to racism in the United States. He is truly a force to reckon with. We have columnist, essayist uh, Sam Omashe in the studio to further discuss how impactful this recent development will be for Nigeria as a country. Thank you for joining us. It's good, good to see you again, Sam. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. <laughs> well, it was a rain of tributes for uh, Wale Shuinka over the weekend uh, as he clocked 90 years. And there are those who say that um, the focus was more about his earthly accomplishments as against uh, his, the number of years he spent on earth so to speak. But for you, what really or how significant is the celebration for? Well, Shuinka is what they call an avatar. Mm -hmm. An avatar is not just a great man, is an extraordinarily great man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what they call an avatar. We have few of them living today. Uh, and you always have few of them living at any time at any epoch. Uh, Shuinka is one of them. Uh, Shuinka's life is in many respects, not in one. Mm. You can call him a writer. You can call him a dramatist. Mm -hmm. You can call him a mythopoist. You can call him a composer. You can call him a novelist. You can call him a human rights fighter, you can call him uh, an internationalist, you can call him a humanist, you can call him a poet. Mm. You, they, they, and the list in ended. all of this is like what uh, uh, somebody described Leonardo da Vinci. He said, he's a universal man of the Renaissance, a veritable master uh, a jack of all trade a master of many mm. <laughs> so, so that was that is what showing guys and you, you see him in various aspects he, he has a protean what they call a protean talent and protean engagements uh, throughout his life which means that you, if you go there you see him there you go there you see him that they say if you go there you did there if you come out there you did there he's, he, he, he's a man who within a span of nine decades has accomplished so much. And at the age of 90, he's reeling out a new play. Yes. Uh, you know, it, who knows? It could, even, could even be his best play. Because Goethe, the, the German playwright, wrote his best play first at the age of 80. <laughs> That's the best. Play that, you know, you, you, there, there, there are other uh, things that he's remembered for, uh, Goethe. But when you mention him, the best, best thing you say about him is his play first. Mm. Wrote, written at the age of 80. <laughs> Interesting. And uh, so uh, this opportunity also provides us with, um, it provides us with the need to also address some issues, what he represents basically, and his uh, impact or effect on the youth. Uh, you know that uh, Prof has been quite active on social media mm. in uh, recent times, and to an extent I will say he has been misunderstood due to the use of some of his terms and also words. Uh, does this not speak to the fact that we are losing our literacy culture, our hold on, you know, culture, tradition? Sometimes when you see some of the youth respond online based on a misunderstanding of what the prophet said. It is it's a contest between the Indomie, Indomie generation <laughs> and the indomitable spirit. Mm -hmm. That is what we see here. These youths who talk about Shoinka, what do they know about the history of Nigeria? What do they know about Shoinka? What do they know about him? Nothing. They have not read anything. If you ask them, have you read uh, the Death and the King's Horseman? So they say they don't know. They, they, they say he doesn't deserve the Nobel Prize. 
Have you read the yeah. death of the king's husband? The trials of Brother Jero. Trials of Brother Jero. Forget trials of Brother Jero. Someone at his lower place. Yes. Have you read the play of giants that twisted, that made a spoof of, 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 of African political decadence and tyrannical the, 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 the depredations? Mm. Have they read Have they read Death and the King's Osman, mm -hmm. which which looked at a clash a clash of, of culture? Although Shinka doesn't want to see it as a clash of culture, mm -hmm. but it's also a story that tells that tells that talks of generational conflict. Mm -hmm. eh? Have they read Ake? Have they read Have they read Have they read the play of giants? Have they read um, Dance Dance of the Forest? You can go go on, on and, and list on. on and on and on. I wrote once that if you split Trinka's um, the offerings into two and give them to two human beings, those two human beings will be deserving of the Nobel Prize. <laughs> 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 Do, they know that? Do they know what happened during the Civil War? Mm. That this same Trinka, that some of them, especially those who they call obedience, are attacking, that he was the one who wanted to know. stop, to stop the war, a single man... He single-handedly traveled across to Biafra because he wanted to stop the war. In fact, a senior military officer told me that when, in the early days of the, of the, of the crisis, instruction was given that anybody that they saw along the express coming from the east should be arrested or killed, except Wole Shoinka, mm. because they knew he was going to come back. He drove on his own there. He saw uh, Okibo. He said, if you read this book, uh, you must set forth a door. Many of these Indomit generation people that have not even read, they don't even know the book. In which he said, he met Okibo there. And Okibo saw him. Okibo was going to get um, ammunition at a particular spot. And he saw him and he yelled. And that was the last time he saw him. Hmm. They should understand what is going on. They should understand that. They should understand that. They understand that. This man fought during the time of the of of, uh, the, civil of the civil war. Uh, he fought for opportunity, and mm. he could have lost his life. They could have shot him and, mm -hmm. and, and got to deal with him. He, he, he fought for great. democracy. Mm. Abacha was looking for him all over the country. Some of them were just toddlers that time. <laughs> right. When Abacha was looking for him all over the world. It's important that uh, we have these kinds of conversation because uh, over the weekend there were symposiums, uh, you know, to talk about yeah. all of the things that he did, and these mm. were some of the concerns raised uh, mm. when the conversations were going on about the fact that there's a dearth when you talk about the reading culture, mm. uh, how uh, some persons are no longer deep thinkers mm. uh, like we have in Wale Shoinka as it is, and so there are concerns that are we going to have uh, more Wale Shoinkas? Are we, are we going to have those kinds of people who are deep thinkers who can express themselves and you know, address issues with their mm. writings? Mm. We will. We, we, every generation throws up their own people. My own disappointment with some of these um, youths is that they're encouraged by people who are supposed to be enlightened, but who are locked, up, who are locked up in ethnic enclaves. And because of that, they forget to see beyond the moment. Mm. There are people who read and did dissertations on Wale Shoenka, who studied his place in school. But because of the pressures of parochial politics, have decided to lend their voice to this nonsense that is going on in the country. But often a time we talk about how it's important that we immortalize people like this. And we saw what the president did. Yeah. And we also see how people have been reacting to mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. decision of the president to name the National Theater mm -hmm. after him. Let's mm -hmm. get your perception and perspective to this decision. Naming the National Theater after Shurinka is one of the most significant decisions that we have made for culture and for producers of culture in this country. Mm -hmm. Shoenka got his greatest accolade in the world for theater. As I said in my column today, it's, also, it's not only an inspiration, but it's also an act mm. for the theater. That's Shoenka himself, in one soul. Shoenka writes plays. Shoenka performs. Shoenka directs. And Shoenka also, also sings, he composes, composes songs, 
and he also performs and did all of that. Where do you get all of that in one place? It is in the theater. What is the most iconic theater in Nigeria? It is the National Theater. Mm -hmm. So it just, it's just a no-brainer that showing car should get that thing named after him. If you, he has performed, there are so many, so many of these plays I've talked about, the Death and the King Sourceman, a play of Giants, a Backe for Euripides. You can, keep, you, can keep, you can keep naming the Dance of the Forest, uh, the general place you said, which are some people say, you know, is a slight thing, but it's very beautiful, beautiful satire, especially yeah. for times like this where you have uh, a lot of religious chicanery uh, that has gone abroad. <laughs> you know, you, 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 see, you, see, you see that the man, the man has done that. He has performed plays all over the world, uh, performed in the, in, in the UK, in the US, in the... In fact, there was one time before I won the Nobel Prize, a play of giants was uh, staged in Yale or Harvard, and one New York Times reporter he was wondering whether the audience really understood the deep implication of that of that play, mm. and 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 he was saying that the play should have been directed better mm -hmm. than it was directed because of the great nuance of that of that play. I remember reading it very well. And uh, recalling that Funsha Alabi, who was one of Shoenka's um, students at IFE, told me about Shoenka. He said, Shoenka is good at everything, but the area is not very good at is as a director. Mm -hmm. But I saw him play Shoenka's other play, which some people have not heard of, Requiem for the Futuro Futurologist, which, which this man actually acted, the Funsha Alabi actor. I said, you acted very well in that play. Who directed it? Said <laughs> So you can see, you see, the, 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 this, is, this, is, this is part of, part of what we are talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You see, have they, have they also read Shoenka's plays, uh, poems? Dory, Ogun Abibima, some of them have probably not heard of Ogun Abibima. Dory Hills and other poems, Mandela's Earth and other poems. And so on, so many. Even some of his, some of his, his uh, poems are so performable, performable, like um, the famous telephone conversation. Mm. Are you black or very white? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that kind of that that poem. You see, and also a singer. Yeah? Remember, he used to have what you what you call a mobile theatre in this country, where where an event is taking place, showing cast troupe will just appear and start. Performing place. Mm -hmm. That's some of these Indo-Media generation. They don't know it. Right. He was doing that. He had a mobile theater, a theater that was engaged with the, with the society. He also had a song that really, really steered the country during the Second Republic. Uh, remember ethical ethical revolution, ethical ethical my head. Oh, ethical. You, you know, he said there was one there. There was one. He said, "Shemi jeje, shemi jeje, shemi jeje." Sugar daddy, shame <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was mocking the, it was mocking a decadent political elite mm. who stole the people's money. Say, Chema, wait till you they find for home. We think say you don't go overseas for Liberia, then say you just come on. Uh, uh, um, your executive we, we judge to just, just passed us Argentina. <laughs> called a limited liability company. That's <laughs> it. That's it. That's it. So it's kind of a, a spoof of the political elite. How they turn Nigeria into a company where they just steal money and go everywhere. So it started like, Shama, with you they find for home. We think say you still they oversee for Liberia. Then say you just come on. Your, your executive judge just passed us for Argentina. <laughs> hey, Chama, this meeting go hot. Oh. Mm -mm. Yeah, so it went on and on. He said, then go to a place. Eh? When, they, when they were getting to a, a zimic point, he said, okay, Shemi Jeje. <laughs> Shemi Jeje, Shemi Jeje. Sugar daddy. Shemi Jeje. Interesting. Yeah. So, so you know, I had an interview with with with, with, with you in Khan once when uh, on TVC, uh, and uh, I asked him about uh, the 
giving of a Nobel Prize to uh, the, uh, this, uh, this uh, musician, forgot his name, uh, Bob Dylan. Mm. Bob Dylan. And he said, if that is the case, then he should, should get a Grammy. <laughs> 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 because he's a musician. He said, so he was saying that they should not uh, abuse, mm. you know, the, the, the literary uh, focus. Mm, on, absolutely. Uh, yes, yes. So it, this, yeah. uh, you know, sort of raises concerns about the quality of what we watch today, the yes. kind of movies that we have. You mentioned that uh, he is involved in, uh, you know, poetry, drama, and all yeah. sorts. Yeah. But when you look at what we look at today, mm. what children and the Indomie generation, like you mentioned, watch yeah. even on their screens, yeah. you will see that to an extent this may have had effect of, on even, you know, the way they think and the perception of major things in the mm. society. I think it is, it is lack of patient reading that is, that is uh, the problem of this Indomie generation I'm talking about. They read two paragraph material, they read five Short paragraph material, mm -hmm. they don't have any reflection. You are on the phone 24 hours of the day reading two, two sentences, uh, uh, two minutes skits, and so on. You don't have time to reflect. Mm -hmm. That is part of the problem of this generation. Um, but but they, they should learn, they should learn that even this same generation mm -hmm. in other societies, in Western societies, are doing big things. Mm -hmm. And they should not be left behind. They should not be left behind. And a lot of responsibility also lies on role modeling. Role right. modeling has become very, very fraught in Nigeria. We don't, the, the kind of role models people look up to are those people who dance, who twerk, who do all kinds of things that have no um, profound um, impact, impact mm. uh, on, on, on society. That, that, is, that, is, that, is a, that is a matter that has continued to recur mm. uh, with us. Now, let's come to you now, how perhaps um, Wale Shrinker's life has impacted your writing. You write as well. You, yes. You, you also are into that, the world of arts. How much impact has he had on you? Well, um, I would say a lot, but it's, it's difficult to say how much impact. What Shrinker has had for me is to really inspire me. Mm. More than, more than anything else. Because when you, when you, you when I was young, uh, one of the early things I read was poetry. When I was in government college, you really read his, his, his poetry. We didn't read his drama. I came to read his drama after I left secondary school. I read the the role plays. I read. I became fascinated. Then I said I wanted to challenge myself. They said there's one book that showing I read that was so difficult to to understand. Mm. That was the man died. Mm. And when I read it, it didn't look that difficult. So I said, why are people making noise about this? I, I went into it believing that I would hold a dictionary by my side <laughs> and I would spend uh, so many hours trying to plow through sentence yeah. after sentence. But I found it very, very interesting, very engaging. And it inspired me to, in, in, the, in, the, in the sense that one, it, it told me that, his writing told me that there's no limit to how you can express yourself. Mm -hmm. Nobody should restrict you. When, when you're going out of school, they say, this is how you should write a sentence. Yeah. You can write a sentence in a different way. And so on. when I read him, and I read other writers, especially Joseph Conrad, I discovered that you have to be free with your expression. How you say it in is, depends on how it comes to you. And, mm -hmm. and Schoenka was, was, uh, was very important in that regard. And when we were in Ife, we studied a lot of his works and with the, 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 uh, what they call it, the, 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 what they call it, uh, Swamp Dwellers. Uh, that was one of his, his plays we, we read. I watched his uh, Requiem for Epiturologies. I saw a lot of his plays on stage in uh, the theater arts, the, they call it Dramatic Arts Department in Ife. And I read that uh, and, uh, we debated him a lot. And mm. we had uh, lecturers who understood him and made us understand showing come on. There was also this question about Schenker's uh, obscurity mm. that is difficult to understand. <laughs> and, uh, and I think it is, it is intellectual uh, indolence that that happens. And, uh, and people, people should just sit down and read the context, the cultural context. 
Stanley Makebo of Blessed Memory. He, he wrote an essay in those days where he, he said to understand Shenka, you should understand the Yoruba culture and you understand right. where it's coming from. You, you, mm. It will not be too difficult for you to understand. There was one expression that people used one time, they don't use it again. Say, I had a rapid dialogue with my, with my feet. In other words, <laughs> in Yoruba, he said, you know, it was you say mobile, mobile, mobile say me so. Uh, you know, it was alarm quickly. You yes. know, alarm fast immediately. <laughs> you notice, know, you know, expression like uh, you must set forth at dawn. I wish you marvelous of the holy hour. It was also a kind of translation of uh, Yoruba, yeah. Yoruba uh, expression. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand that the man is deep in this culture, and even is able to also uh, while going to the interstices of the Yoruba culture, was able to blend it and modernize it. That's one of the, the things that uh, the, the Nobel uh, citation was impressed, was, uh, impressed, impressed with. Mm. So Shoenka, Shoenka, to a great extent, um, influenced me, influenced so many people uh, of my generation who read him and who keep reading him. Um, I, I so, still so read him. So which of his works stands out for you? For me, it's the dance of the forest and uh, Ake. Those two are my best work. Uh, right. are my best for the, the dance of the forest is his independence play. It was the first um, play that was mentioned in um, the first play that was mentioned in the Lubert citation. As a uh, dance of the forest, he wrote it for Nigerian independence. It's about it's about anticlimax. You have all of these people who, who believe that something was going to happen and then nothing happens. And uh, in a sense, it reminds me of um, an absurd display by Samuel Beckett, uh, uh, waiting for the good Godot. Yeah, but showing Kazon is, is, is more vast, is more characters and so on. Uh, so so that, one, that one did a lot to me. Ake, Ake was a, a novel, a, it was a novel, they call that auto-fiction these days, where you blend your own personal experience with your fiction and bring them together. Yeah, so that one had a great impact. It was a, a story of his childhood, where he talked about his mother, wild Christian, his father, his introduction into life, and so on. Very wonderful. I think everybody should go and read Ake. In fact, I believe that it was his publication of Ake that, opened the world to say, wow, mm. let me see what other things this man has written. Yeah. Yes, he did that. And Therefore, uh, play is Ogun Abibi man. It's about South Africa and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and since, uh, to an extent, you resonate with his writings and his values, maybe we are looking at the next uh, World Show in Kashi. <laughs> Nobel laureate. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you intend to pass this on? You know, the prof has been able to, you know, influence your own writing. Mm. What are you doing to pass this on to the next generation, the Indomie generation, uh, which may seem a bit more difficult to influence? We, uh, we keep writing. Mm. We keep writing and, and uh, keep evangelizing the fact that the country is a project. It's not an individual or a, a sectional project. The country belongs to all of us. We are a consciousness, we are a temperament, we are a vision, we are a future. Mm. So we need to understand that. And to, to, to do that, we need to keep flogging, flogging. You keep fighting until we're able to get some around. And then you see, you see, the most vocal ones are not necessarily representative of the majority. That is, a, that is, a terrible, that is a terrible thing about this thing. <laughs> Absolutely. There are very, there, 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 there are some very noisy people and they, they keep engaged in, in, in this cacophony, and you think that they represent everybody. They are very brilliant young people of that generation, but they are not in the me generation. They are <laughs> indomitable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. So, so would you think that perhaps in schools, uh, schools should look at um, going back to some of his works? Because I know those years, uh, a lot of Wale Shrinka's works were in schools, were part of the curriculum, yes, as it is. Yes, yes. Should we now look at revisiting that? For it's, it's something that should be done all the time. It's something that should be done all the time. Uh, Shrinka's works are supposed to be monuments of the culture. Each work is a monument of its culture. People say that our monuments are in our stories. Yes. Uh, and the stories are what Shrinka 
Chuenka has said, has told us in many ways, in many, in many fashions, uh, you know, in many languages, I mean languages, not language in terms of English language or anything, but in many phrases and many um, textures. You know, he has, he, has, he has told us those stories. And he has told us in a way that we can understand it, in which we can relate it, relate to it, in which we can reflect on it, mm -hmm. in ways that we can turn a theory into praxis. You know, he, he, he has done that. He has done that. He has written many, many essays. In fact, uh, was it uh, Times of, uh, not Times of London, um, Financial Times, characterized his essays as thunderous. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he has, he has done, he has done, he has done, has done a lot of that. And some of them try to, some of these people try to compare Shoenka and uh, Achebe, and then they say Shoenka cannot stand beside Achebe. What nonsense! So they say because of that, Shoenka does not deserve uh, a Nobel, Nobel Prize. Prize. Which is which is complete nonsense. Do they know what they they, they are, these people? They only read this fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> Eh? They've not, they've not read. Yeah, the things fall apart is his most popular work, mm. but things fall apart is not Achebe's best work. It is arrow of God. Mm. Even Achebe himself, even said so that arrow of God. If you want to catch me uh, re reading any of my books, you are likely to catch me reading arrow, arrow of God. Not things fall apart. Things mm. fall apart is a good book. There's no doubt about that. Even if it deserves a Nobel Prize, it doesn't mean that Shuenka does not deserve a Nobel Prize. Oh. I think it's just it's just a sort it's it's, uh, it's, uh, it's envy, and uh, and you know when you are on top, you're always the topic. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a fine place to live. Yeah. <laughs> the usual Sam Omashe columnist <laughs> essays. Thank you so much for your time on the program.